the ancient rhetoricians believed that by studying language and persuasion, understanding how ideas take shape, understanding how people become persuaded of positions and ideas, you can listen better, you can understand better, but you can also come to an understanding of where the disagreements arise in the first place. And therefore, you can figure out what a solution is. You can figure out not how to agree on everything, but how to agree on some practical solutions to some of those social and political problems. Um, and so they studied all the forms of argumentation, all the forms of persuasion, everything that they saw that worked, that um, had an effect on how people thought, how they acted, how they behaved, how they responded to issues. They studied that. They, they memorized other speeches. They practiced their own. They sparred with one another. Um, and when we, when we think about rhetoric today, we might have a kind of passing familiarity, familiarity with some of its history. We might have heard, you know, of like the logos, ethos, pathos, you know, three-part logic, emotion, and authority, but not the whole, not, not the whole tradition and not all those, um, those various and, and copious and powerful methods of persuasion and forms of language. So those are those two, those two sides of, the, of that equation. One is rhetoric helps us understand how persuasion works and therefore leads to our understanding, better understanding about how disagreements arise and also how to reach a kind of resolution to them. Um, but also the fact that we don't spend much time thinking about this only adds fuel to the fire, the, the increases and in, in, accelerates the problems that beset us where where we we need to work together to understand each other better find better solutions